Hello. Today we will be solving a numerical example on open type flat belt drive. The question for today's session is design a flat belt drive for a compressor running at 670 rpm which is driven by a 25 kilowatt 1340 rpm motor. Space is available for a center distance of 3 meter. The belt is open type. The data book used for solving this numerical example is the one prepared by Mahadevan and Balavir Reddy and published by CBS Publishers and Distributors Private Limited. The given data are the power P is 25 kilowatts, N1, the speed of the smaller pulley is 1340 rpm, N2, the speed of the larger pulley is 670 rpm and the center to center distance C is 3 meters. The velocity ratio I can be found out as N1 divided by N2 that is also equal to D2 by D1 that is 1340 divided by 670 that is 2. Now in the first step we determine the diameter of the smaller and the bigger pulleys. The picture represents the given arrangement. The belt velocity V can be found out as pi D N1 divided by 60 into 1000. But we doesn't know the value of small d, so we assume a belt velocity of 20 meters per second. This value can be obtained from the table 14.12 page number 312. Actually this particular table is not meant to provide us the belt velocity, but from the title row we take the middle value that is 20 meters per second. Therefore the diameter of the smaller pulley d can be calculated as 60 times 1000 times v divided by pi times n1. That comes to 285.2 millimeters. But this diameter 285.2 millimeter is not a standard value for the diameter of pulleys. So we select the preferred pulley diameter as 315 millimeter. This value can be taken from the table 14.13b in page number 313. Now we find out the diameter of the larger pulley capital D as I times D, small d that is 2 times 315 that is 630 millimeter. Now the belt velocity V can be found out as pi into D N1 divided by 60 times 1000. This belt velocity calculation is to find out the revised belt velocity. But actually we assumed a belt velocity of 20 meters per second. But in that case we got a small d, the diameter of the smaller pulley as uh, some 285 but we standardized the value d to 315. The revised velocity is 22.1 meters per second. Now we can find out the number of flies as 5. This value is taken from the table 14.12 in page number 312. And the number of plies is obtained for a velocity of 22.1 meters per second and a diameter D of 315 millimeter. Now in the step 2 we find out the maximum power. We consider 10 hours of duty for the compressor. Therefore the service correction factor Ks is obtained as 1.3. This value can be obtained from the table 14.19 in page number 322. Therefore, the maximum power Vmax is equal to 1.3 times 25, that is 32.5 kilowatts. Now in the step 3, we find out the angles of contact. For the smaller pulley, theta s is given as pi minus 2 times sin inverse capital D minus small d divided by 2c. This is equation 14.1a in page number 289. By substituting the values of capital D and small d as well as capital C, we get theta s as 3.035 radians or 173.98 degrees. Now for the larger pulley, the angle of contact theta l is pi plus 2 times sin inverse capital D minus small d divided by 2c. This is equation 14.1b in page number 289. Substituting the values of capital D, small d and capital C, we get 
theta L as 3.245 radians or 186.02 degrees. In the step 4, we find out the centrifugal stress. The centrifugal stress sigma C is W V squared divided by 10 raised to 6 times G. This is equation 14.3 F in page number 291. Now W is the weight density of the material and it can be obtained as 10.89 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per meter cube from the page number 296. The belt velocity V is calculated as 22.1 meters per second. Therefore, substituting the values of W, V and G in the equation for centrifugal stress, we find out the centrifugal stress sigma C as 0 0.542 mega Newton per meter squared. Now in the step 5, we calculate the power transmitted per square millimeter of well to cross section. So the power per millimeter squared equal to V divided by 1000 multiplied by sigma d minus sigma c multiplied by e raised to mu theta minus 1 divided by e raised to mu theta. This is equation 14.6a in page number 291. In this case, the belt velocity v is 22.1 meters per second. The design stress sigma d is 2.06 mega newton per meter squared. This is the value for leather belt and it is given just below the equation itself. Now the centrifugal stress sigma c is 0 0.542 mega newton per meter squared. The coefficient of friction mu is 0 0.511 and this value can be obtained from the table 14.2b in page number 305. The angle of contact theta is theta s that is 3.035 radians. Now, substituting these values in the equation for power transmitted per square millimeter, we obtain the power per millimeter squared as 0 0.0264 kilowatt per millimeter squared. Now, the area of cross section A can be obtained as maximum power divided by the power per millimeter squared. That is 32.5 divided by 0 0.0264 that is 1231.1 mm squared. Now we assume the belt thickness T as 10 mm. Therefore the belt width B equal to capital A divided by T that is 123.1. It can be approximated as 125 mm. Actually this 125 is a standardized value and it can be obtained from the table 14.13c in page number 313. In the step 6 we find out the length of the belt. The equation for the length of the belt is given as equation 14.2b in page number 290. And the equation is L is square root of 4 c squared minus capital D minus small d the whole squared plus half of capital D into theta L plus small d into theta S. Capital C is 3000 millimeter, capital D is 630 millimeter, small d is 315 millimeter, theta L is 3.245 radians, theta S is 3.035 radians. Substituting these values, we get capital L as 7491.92 mm or can be approximated as 7.49 meters. Now we find out the initial tension on the belt. The initial tension T0 can be found out using the relation 2 times square root of T0 equal to square root of T1 plus square root of T2. This is Equation 14.8 in page number 291. But we doesn't know the value of T1 and T2. In order to find out the values of T1 and T2, we use the equation for the power transmitted as well as the ratio of the tensions. So the power transmitted P max is equal to T1 minus T2 times small v divided by 1000. This is equation 14.58 in page number 291. 
From this equation, we get T1 minus T2 as 1470.6. Since the velocities are high, the ratio of the tensions are given as T1 minus Tc divided by T2 minus Tc equal to e raised to mu theta. And that is 4.716. This is the equation 14.3c in base number 290. Now the centrifugal force Tc can be found out as WB T V squared divided by 10 raised to 6 times G. This is equation 14.3E in page number 291. W is the weight density of the material that is 10.89 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per meter cube. B is the belt to width that is 125 millimeter. T is the belt thickness that is 10 millimeter. V is the belt velocity that is 22.1 meters per second. Substituting the values in the equation for centrifugal force, Tc is obtained as 677.7 Newton. Now solving the equations T1 minus T2 equal to 1470.6 and T1 minus 677.7 divided by T2 minus 677.7 equal to 4.716. We obtain T1 as 2544.05 Newton and T2 as 1073.45 Newton. Therefore, the initial tension T0 is square root of T1 plus square root of T2 divided by 2, the whole squared. Substituting the values of T1 and T2, we obtain T0 as 1730.65 Newton. Now to conclude, the diameter of the larger pulley we obtained as 630 mm, the diameter of the smaller pulley as 315 mm, the width of the belt 125 mm, thickness of the belt 10 mm, length of the belt. 7.49 meter, number of plies, 5 numbers, initial tension, 1730.65 Newton. And that's all. Thank you.